Howdy, howdy. It's Wednesday night. I ought to be at church with the kids, but I'm not, and neither are they. Because where I am, everything's shut down. I don't know what it's like where you are. Here in our little town of Ozark, we're on a 30-day stay-at-home order. And I guess I'm a preacher, so I'm non-essential. <laughs> so I'm just going to keep doing what I do anyway. And I hope that the Lord will bless you and your family uh, for listening in on this. So now we're going to do a little tune called Jesus is Coming Soon. Seek the way pilgrims trod, Christians away. Jesus is coming soon, morning or night or noon. Many will meet their doom, the trumpets will sound. All of the dead shall rise, righteous meet in the sky. Going where no one dies, heaven. supper my shirt popped open what do you think about that but I didn't eat as much today as I ate yesterday my pants were getting tight and I figured well I can't afford new pants so I got to do something Jesus is coming soon and and he talked about this and uh, in Luke chapter 12 he said and this note that if the goodman of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not have suffered his house to be broken through. Be ye therefore ready also, for the Son of Man cometh at an hour when ye know not. You see, beloved, he's going to come. He said he was going to come. All of the apostles said he was going to come. Every writer of the New Testament said he was going to come. And if you want to get really particular, all the prophets in the Old Testament said he was going to come. And some of them spoke of both his first coming and his second coming. So he's coming back. A good friend of mine, oh, he's gone on to be with the Lord now. 
name was Bob White. Oh, I loved him. He was at my at my ordination. Yeah, I loved him, and he was a mentor to me. And he used to preach, and he'd preach about the rapture, and he would say, he's going to toot, and we're going to scoot. Woo! He'd get to talking so fast, you'd think that he was talking in tongues because he was talking too fast to understand. And I thought I would thought I would need an interpreter sometime. But uh, you know, I know that people get confused about this, and I don't claim to know when he's going to come. I don't claim that he's going to come necessarily because things are bad right now, because there's a plague, because there have been a lot of plagues, and he didn't come back. You know, Paul in his day before he was in Nero's dungeon, he believed that Jesus was going to come back before he died. Well, obviously, that didn't happen. Uh, I imagine the people that were getting thrown into the, the lines in the Colosseum uh, under Domitian and Hadrian, I'm sure that, that they expected the Lord to come at any time. And I imagine people that were suffering through the Black Death and some of the wars and all of these things that have gone on through the last 2,000 years expected the Lord to come at any minute. But one minute he will come. He's going to come like a thief in the night. He's going to come just like that. He's going to come in a twinkling of an eye. And everything's going to change. Um, but we don't know when. And I don't pretend to know when. I just know that he's going to come because he said he would. And Jesus Christ does not lie. Paul was talking to the church at Thessalonica. Now, if you ever been with me when I was preaching a funeral, and, and, and many of you have, because you get to be my age, you preach a lot of funerals because your friends die. And of course, if you pastor a church, you preach a lot of funerals. And I always read this passage. It's about hope. Because we have hope in the Lord. It's in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. It goes like this. Paul is writing to the church at Thessalonica. He says, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren. Now, you know, it just occurs to me, this is the fastest growing denomination in the United States. It's the, the church of the ignorant brethren. Uh, you don't want to join that church. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again. And you have to believe that if you're to be a Christian. That is a basic thing. You have to believe that Jesus died and rose again. So he's writing to Christians. If we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with them. Who's he talking about bringing with him? All the saints that have died in Christ. All of them. Your mama, your daddy, grandma, grandpa, Every saved person that has died and is in the grave, their soul has been with the Lord ever since they breathed their last breath here on earth. Because the scripture says that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And when we put that body in the grave, the spirit is already with Jesus. And, 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 and it has been there ever since that moment of departure. Uh, we have examples in the New Testament where, where Jesus talks about the angels came and carried Lazarus away into Abraham's bosom. Uh, we know that when Stephen the martyr was stoned that he looked up in the heaven and he said, I see the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Well, why was Jesus standing? He was standing to welcome his martyr home because in the next breath, old brother Stephen was with him. So that body is in the grave. All those souls coming back with the Lord, he's going to bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. You see, Paul thought that Jesus was going to come back before he died because he said, we who are alive and remain. He expected to be around when the sky split open. You know, it's really funny. People talk about aliens and monsters and zombies and, you know, life on other worlds and Star Trek and Star Wars and all this stuff. 
But you know, Christian really believes a really out of this world kind of thing. Because see, I believe that one day a guy that used to be dead is going to appear one morning in the eastern sky in a flame of fire and tell me it's time to go home with him. I believe that. And if you believe in the words of Christ, you believe that too. So we're not going to prevent those which are asleep. Uh, they've been with him all this time. Now they're coming back with him. And he's talking about those that are asleep. Well, their body's asleep in the grave. If we notice in the Old Testament, every time somebody dies, he says, he died. <laughs> Go through the genealogies. They could be dry, but there's gold in them in our hills. There's, there are things that you can discover in the genealogies and the begats and the begots that you just can't find anywhere else. And it leads you off on exciting journeys into other places in the Scripture. But, you know... It's like, and Noah lived after the flood 350 years, and he died. And so Adam lived 930 years, and he died. It's always, and he died. You get to the New Testament after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and the Christian is spoken of and written of as having fallen asleep. When Stephen was stoned by the mob, it says that he fell asleep, calling upon God. Lay not this sin to their charge. At least a dozen times in the New Testament, a dead Christian is spoken of as sleeping. I find that marvelous because one day the sleeping will awake. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, and with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. Oh boy! With the trump of God. My kitchen window right over there, it faces east. And of course, I get up before daylight. And you get up 5 o'clock your whole life, you don't quit getting up at 5 o'clock just because you don't have any job to go to anymore. And while I'm getting my coffee ready and I'm over there by that kitchen window, I'm looking out and I'm thinking, will today be the day? Is today the day that he's going to come? I want him to come today. I yearn to be with him. I want to see him. I want to behold him. Will today be the day? And then that trumpet's going to blow. <laughs> like old Bob White said, he's going to toot and we're going to scoot. Woo! And the dead in Christ shall rise first. See, he's bringing air the souls of everybody that slept with them. They're going to go into those bodies that are in the ground, those decomposed bodies, those bodies that have turned to dust and there ain't nothing left. Why? Because Jesus walked out of the grave in a glorified body that will never change. And one day, long after my body's turned to dust in that grave, if he doesn't come soon, my soul will re-enter my body and I will rise again. He said the dead in Christ shall rise first. Why? Why should the dead in Christ rise first? That's because all the Christians who are alive and watching, they will know that Jesus kept his promise. He said, I will not leave thy soul in hell. I will not allow you to suffer corruption. I'll have a new body. I'll have a new life. That which is sown... And in, in corruption is raised incorruptible. That, that which is sown in mortality is raised immortal. Perfect because he's perfect. Alive because he's alive. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. You know the song. The dead in Christ shall rise first so that the Christians who are alive and remain when he comes will know that Jesus is the faithful witness, that he is forever faithful, and that he keeps his word. He always does what he says he's going to do. And he's going to let everybody that's alive then know that he's not going to leave his people in the grave. Ain't no grave going to hold me down. We'll have to sing that one one night. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together 
with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. <laughs> the spirit of my father, his soul is going to re-enter that body that's in the grave. I forgot the name of the cemetery. It's out there on West Timer, just out there by Derry Ashford. A lot of you were there at the funeral. But I can't remember the name of it, but I went to see it when I came to the high school reunion. That grave's going to bust open. His body's going to shoot out of there just like a, like a rocket. And so is every other believer. And then I am going to join them in the air. I'm going to be caught up if I'm still alive. And everybody that's still alive is going to be caught up, caught up to join them in the air. And it says, so shall they ever be with the Lord. That's why I tell people when I see them and say goodbye, I will say, well, I'll see you here or there or in the air. I'm sure you've probably heard that quite a while, many times you've been going to church for quite a while. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. From that point on, this Jesus, the Savior, oh, what a Savior. This God, the Son of God that I want to see who gave his life for me. From that point on, through all eternity, I'll never have to leave his side. I'll never have to be out of his presence. I will never be out of the light that he gives. I will never be able not to see his indescribable beauty be with him forever. Then it says, wherefore, comfort one another with these words. You see, the rapture and the return of Christ for his bride, the church, that's supposed to comfort us. I don't know about you, but I've seen all this movie I need to see. It don't ever change. I keep trying to change the channel, but it keeps being the same. Now, granted, this plague that we got going on now is a little different from what it usually is. And they said, well, what are the signs that it's going to happen? There are no signs. It could have many, many. But we're seeing all these signs, and all you preachers talk about earthquakes and plagues and pestilences and, and, uh, and uh, sin and debauchery and all this stuff that's going on in the world, that that's a sign of the... Now, those are signs of the tribulation, the seven-year period where devil's going to have charge here on earth. He can do whatever he wants to. But if you can already see the shadow of the things in the tribulation, then how near must the rapture be? See, he's coming back. So when people say, well, what's the sign that he's coming back? Jesus said there wasn't no sign. There ain't a sign. I'm going to come like a thief in the night, and you just need to be ready. Because like Bob White said, one of these days he's going to toot and I'm going to scoot. I used to call it the toot scoot boogie. So I'm not looking for a sign. No. No, I'm listening for a trumpet. Because one of these mornings, that eastern sky is going to part like a cloud. And there he'll be. And he'll say, come on, it's time to go. I'm going to be with him forever. Will you be? You can. All you have to do is commit your life to him. That's all you got to do. He'll do the rest. I'll be 
I'll see you here, or there, or in the air. God love you.